students welcome to the very session i am preeksha sharma your english educator at an academy and i welcome you all to this very particular session everybody how are you all doing i hope that everybody must be super great right so guys i welcome you all once again in today's session we are going to deal with the topic subject verb concord that is subject verb agreement which is literally one of the important topics from your examination point of view and this topic is definitely going to be a part of your upcoming examination so kindly don't miss this out all righty people so i welcome you all once again to this session my name is preeksha sharma i hope that you guys know me if you don't know me then let me give you all a very brief introduction everyone i've done ma in english from delhi university and for the past few years i've been guiding a lot of students to be really amazing in their communication skills and to score good marks in their academics right and i'm so sure that i'm going to help each one of you as well all righty people so now we are moving ahead guys okay so you know very well that we have got an academy plus platform right this is one of the platforms wherein you can connect more with us you can ask us any number of doubts that you all are coming across with also you can be so very much at ease that yes the following educator is there to help you with the problems or the doubts that you all are coming across with okay so we are providing you all flat 10% discount guys this is my code which is psh10 make use of this code because this will give you straight forward 10% discount and will give you an assurance that preeksha ma'am is going to be there to solve any of your doubts when it comes to your subject english okay guys i hope that you go uh, you guys are going to meet me definitely on the very uh, channel i mean on the very platform that is plus platform okay now guys we have got bugs bounty what is this this is something pretty different it's an opportunity for all the learners to report any inappropriate content which is there in the video so if you find like when any educator who is teaching you if you find that there's something which is inappropriate which is not really right or which is not appropriate you guys can report that okay so be the first one to report a particular issue to claim your prize and report any inappropriate content using the form which is given in the description below so you guys can go ahead with this i know it's pretty different but it's pretty unique as well you guys can go ahead with this okay i hope you all got that so right now moving ahead guys we are going to start with subject verb agreement or concord okay so guys what do you really understand by this particular uh, topic i'm sure that this is not something alien to you this is not something foreign to you you guys must have studied this and you guys must have the knowledge that what exactly subject and verb agreement or concord is all about all right so let's move ahead guys as you see that here in it says what subject and verb agreement and what do you mean by that you know like when you're just looking at the topic you can grab the meaning out of it so easily here in it is talking about an agreement what does that mean that they should agree with each other so the subject and verb when they are meeting together they should agree with each other and again what do you mean by the term concord this again means the agreement okay that means that the words they must be in accordance with each other okay they should go hand in hand okay whatever subject is the verb should be according to that i am talking in terms of being singular or being plural okay that is what it means that if the subject is singular your verb will be singular if the subject is plural your verb will also be plural that is what your subject verb agreement is all about and guys please note here you know subject and verb agreement is really one of the very important topics and this is the root and the base of your english okay if you really want to improve your pronunciation your fluency and if you really want to improve your communication skills okay your con skills you have to work hard with this okay today i am going to share with all of you the roots that are very important make sure that you guys are definitely going to pay attention so keenly okay i'm using the word keen here because a proper attention is needed okay so don't be disturbed guys if you want to eat anything keep that packet with you keep eating and keep listening to me okay so that you keep understanding well all right let's move ahead everyone 
so now we are going to understand in deep like what does subject and verb agreement mean if there is any issue you guys can uh, post your comment in the comment section after the uh, after the session is over and i will get back to you with the answers okay so let's understand everybody that what exactly is subject and verb agreement what does it mean all righty people now we are moving ahead so there is this rule of thumb guys and what does that say okay there is this rule of thumb that means the very basic rule the very first rule that you should understand and what is it it says subject and verbs they must agree with each other in number this is very important guys what is subject come on i'm sure you guys know this subject is the doer okay doer of the action for example if i'm telling you he is playing okay so here in what is the subject he is the subject instead of he if i am saying rohan is playing then you know rohan is the subject why because rohan is the doer what do you mean by the doer doer is the one who performs the action right everybody who performs the action so that is the subject here in what do you see that rohan is acting as the subject guys right that's so clear to everybody that rohan is the subject and now we see is playing is them okay so i'm using my verb is here why because rohan is singular right so that is why my verb what is the verb verb is the action word right do you all agree with me i'm sure that's clear to everybody right there so is is my action verb that's basically talking here i mean that's giving me an indication that rohan is singular that is why i'm using a singular verb right so here in it is also singular so that's the straightforward rule guys that's so straight right what exactly is happening here that subjects and verbs must agree with each other in number that means if this is singular okay as in if your subject is singular okay if your subject is singular your verb must also be singular that's the rule that you should keep in your mind okay that is very important to be kept in your mind okay so guys what you have to understand is that your subject and verb they are pair okay if one is one the second has to be one also if one is more than one the second also have to be more than one okay do you get that all right so let's see here like singular or plural therefore if the subject is singular its verb must be singular and if a subject is plural its verb must be plural this is what you guys will have to keep in your mind and this is the very first rule of thumb always keep this in your mind guys okay if you are using the singular verb for example let me take another example wherein i am saying okay let me use the another pen okay so here in if i am saying that mohan runs fast okay so what exactly happened here mohan is what mohan is my singular subject here because i'm talking about just one person and i'm using runs run is my actual verb okay that's my actual verb in the root form i'm adding s to it why because i have to make it singular so i have used what i have used here the singular verb all right people so this is how you have to make sentences in your english this is what you will have to keep in your mind while you are going to attempt the questions in your examination okay now let's move ahead guys what are the rules let's understand some of the rules okay which is very important let's understand some of the rules and their examples that help identifying the subject verb agreement guys all the rules they are very important okay you can learn them while practicing well okay you have to prepare certain sentences okay form certain sentences of your own try to speak with your parents with your siblings with with anybody whom so ever you are close with and you can really practice well because that uh, that is literally going to help you all well okay now we are moving ahead rule number 1 guys and listen to me so carefully what does it say that's the straightforward rule that we did right now that is a rule of thumb if a subject is singular that is the doer of the action is singular then the verb that is the action word all right what is the action word for example it can be anything run sleep okay for example listen enjoy eat okay all these words they are the action words then the verb must be singular that's a straightforward thing that we did right 
and if the subject is plural then the verb must be plural too now look at the example the boy is crossing the road so here what do you see that boy is your subject which is what which is singular and is is the verb which is what which is also singular so what we see here guys like whenever it is singular verb must be singular okay that is what you have to keep in your mind okay keep this in your mind always now look at the another example the boys are crossing the road here boys okay s is there which means more than one so that is why it is plural okay now here the subject is plural we have added s to it now r is the verb which is also plural so guys what is the straightforward rule see whenever it is he she and it okay it is what it is always singular and they are always going to take what they are always going to take the singular verb all right but there is an exception okay please know that i okay this is singular but with i we use the plural verb and what is the plural verb plural uh, plural verb is the first form of your verb for example if i am saying i eat okay so here in this is singular but it's an exception keep this in your mind for your good this is your exception okay keep this in your mind alrighty people so now he she it uh, will have only the singular verb while your you okay we your they will have your plural verb okay keep this in your mind because we and they that's acting as a plural okay and you will also be taking at the plural verb that is the first form of the verb all right i hope that's clear to everybody right there let's move to the next thing now let's look at another example the teacher is attending the seminar so teacher here is what it's singular is also is singular okay now teacher is your subject which is singular is is your verb which is singular so pairing is done so perfectly okay now the teachers are attending the seminar so teachers is your subject which is plural r is your verb which is plural very cut clear and so straightforward right that's the straight rule keep that in your mind now let's move ahead to our rule number two which is again one of the important rules what does it say guys here and we are going to deal with first person second person and third person all right what does it say see whether the subject is first person singular okay first person singular that means we are here talking about i okay first person like i am teaching i am the first person and singular okay or plural that means we again that's first person but that's plural okay it will take the plural form of the verb okay or you can say that the root form does not change what is the root form root form is the base form of the verb right that is the base form or we call it to be the infinitive form what is the infinitive form that the actual form of the verb the verb form in which it actually exists okay see here now your i like to play billiards okay so i here is singular subject like here is your plural verb okay now we again here is what it is your first person plural okay and it is taking like that means that this is the base form of the verb the form of the verb in which it actually exists so what is it now this is also plural okay so uh, here what do you see i is subject and is first person singular i told this to all of you right whereas we is the subject and it is again first person plural but in both the cases the verb like remains the same like is same so that means you are using the first form of the verb which is ultimately the plural form of the verb so this is what you have to remember when it comes to your first person singular or first person plural clear to everybody i hope that's making sense right now we are moving to the next thing so moving on to the next scenario when the subject is second person okay it will take the plural verb this is what you all will have to keep in your mind now what is the second person i told you that i is the first person you is the second person 
okay for example if i'm saying you like to play billiards okay here in you is subject and second person hence the plural form of the verb that is like will be used keep this in your mind okay for example if i'm uh, saying that you eat pizza okay or you eat noisily if i'm saying that you eat noisily so here in what am i doing i am using my subject you then i am writing eat here okay the reason being that the you here is what like you here is my second person okay but it will always take the plural verb and what is the plural verb actual form of the verb all right i hope that's making sense to each one of you guys these things are very important keep them in your mind always because that's how you develop the proper understanding of the subject and grammar okay all righty people now what happens when subject is third person singular or plural so we are done with first person we are done with the second person now we are moving to the next scenario which is the third person okay so now when the subject is the third person singular okay just note here third person singular all righty so that means what he she or it that is your third person singular all right that is your third person singular when i'm talking about the third party okay then we add s or es to the root verb that is to the base verb for example if i'm saying she dances well okay here in what am i doing i have added s to the root form of the verb what is my root form of the verb dance is my root form of the verb but i have added s to it in order to make it singular so here the uh, particular thing that you have to keep in your mind is when the subject is third person plural means that they or them then we use the root verb as it is so what does it mean that when the subject is third person singular means he she it then you are going to add s or es to make it singular okay because you have to use the singular verb with the singular subject but when the subject is third person plural that means they or them then in that case you guys are going to use the root form of the verb that means the very first form of the verb in which it actually exists okay now for example if i am saying what they dance well so here in what have i done guys here in i have used they which is plural okay and this is third person i'm talking about the third party now okay and i have used the form of the verb in its actual manner which is actually the plural form without adding s or es so this is straightforward word this is straightforward your plural verb clear to everyone all right now there is a side note for everybody sometimes students get confused by this like s or es okay they take it as plural but let me clarify this to you that here in the subject verb agreement or concord this represents singularity guys keep this in your mind if you see the dances is given or if you see eats is given if you see like sleeps is given okay or if you see like uh, another word like studies okay is given so don't uh, think that just because because s is added or you know like es has been added so that is that means that it is now becoming plural no okay that's just a different thinking don't go by that perspective it simply means that you are making the verb to be very singular okay i hope that's making sense guys all right so now let's clear it with some examples people okay now look at the example she likes candies here she is the subject which is singular you all know that she is one and that is why it is singular singular is one and like is the root verb that means that it is actually the base form of the verb the form of the verb in which it actually exists and so we have added s to make it like so now this is what this is likes okay now it is representing the singularity of the subject now it means that it is singular okay clear to everybody right now if i am saying they like candies here they is subject which is plural right you know that they is more than one that is why whatever is more than one that's plural right and as we have learned earlier that if the third person subject is plural the root verb will remain as it is hence the verb like will remain as it is so here in we are keeping the root verb all right as is 
so that means i am not changing it so this is what you all have to keep in your mind this is how we deal with first person second person and third person i hope that's clear to everybody right there all right people now we are moving to rule number three and let's have a look what does it say when the subject of the sentence comprises two or more nouns or pronouns connected by an, then the subject will agree to the plural form of the verb. What does that mean? That means when there are two subjects, for example, if I'm talking about Ram and Sham, okay, I'm taking these names uh, so that you guys understand it well. Okay, so Ram and Sham are good friends this is my sentence everybody okay now in this sentence what do you see that two subjects what is the uh, first subject ram is my subject one guys okay and sham is my subject two and it has been joined by the conjunction conjunction what does that mean a joining word and Okay, subject 1 and subject 2, they are joined by two, uh, by a conjunction N and I am writing here R. So, what exactly is the verb that I am using? I am using a plural verb. So, that means when two subjects, two different identities, two different subjects are joined by one uh, conjunction and that is N, then you are going to use the plural verb because now you are going to talk about more than one. Okay, so here I have used R. I hope that's clear to everybody. Let's look at uh, the example that's written here. The students and the management communicate every week. So, the students, it is your subject one. The management, it is your subject two. And it's been joined by a conjunction, a joining word and. That is why I'm using what I'm using, the plural verb communicate here. If it would have been singular, it would have been communicates. S would have been there. But no, I'm going to use the verb in its actual original form. And what is that? That's communicate. Okay. Now the second one. You and I are going for the science class tomorrow. So you is your subject one. I is your subject two. And are going. R is coming here. Because again, two subjects have been used. And we have used one conjunction. And in order to join those two subjects. Clear to everybody? And then the next example, Kajal and Rohit have gone to look for a mechanic. Kajal is your subject 1, Rohit is your subject 2. We are joining it with the conjunction and that is why I am using here have. Okay, and with have you use third form of the verb, that is why it has been used. But here what you have to consider is whenever two subjects are there, okay, two different identities that we are talking about and they have been joined by and you guys are going to use a plural verb. Keep that in your mind. All right. So that was your rule number three. Now we are coming to rule number four. Okay. What does it say? When the sentence has words such as along with, okay, guys, this is one of the very important rules, okay, a lot of students commit mistake whenever it comes to this rule, so kindly listen to me very carefully. When the sentence has the words such as along with, okay, besides, not, one of, or none of, or as well as, or you say with also, okay, like with as well okay if you see with as well then the subject will agree to the singular form of the verb now what does that mean look at the examples then you guys are going to understand well it says one of my friends so you know one of is one of the expressions guys which will always take a plural noun listen to me carefully listen to me very carefully i am actually talking about one of the important rules here one of is the expression that will always take your plural noun. But the verb that it is going to follow is going to be singular. Okay, you have to keep this in your mind, a very important rule. The verb will be always, it's going to be singular. Because why? Because see, if I'm saying one of my friends, so out of a lot of friends, I'm talking about one friend. So, that is acting as my main subject because I am not talking about all the friends. Okay? I am only talking about one out of all of them. That is why that will act as my subject. So, that is why you will have to do what? You will have to use the singular verb along with it. Okay? So, now what does it say? It says... One of my friends is not coming to my birthday party. I hope that's clear, guys. Please keep this in your mind. It's very, very important. Next, 
Now it says the child along with his parents is coming for the meeting. Now guys I told you here like if such words are given along with you have to completely neglect it okay. It is not going to be a part of your subject. Why? See here. The child along with his parents is coming for the meeting. If I am just deleting this out out of this sentence it's not going to change my sentence. The meaning of my sentence for example if I am saying the child is coming for the meeting. Okay, that means the child is ultimately coming for the meeting. Yeah, but if I am if I am adding the sentence, I mean the words, the child along with his parents is coming for the meeting. It also means the same that the child is ultimately coming for the meeting. Okay, so whenever you find these words along with, okay, do not consider it that the child is subject one and parents subject to so uh, this is making plural that is why you are going to use the plural verb that will be wrong you have to learn it okay the child along with his parents would be would not be i mean along with his parents would not be a part of your subject we are only going to consider the child or if it would have been children then the verb would have been are so here the child is your actual subject okay and that is why you are writing here the verb is which is singular clear everybody now it says hard work as well as discipline is what required to finish this task. Now guys see hard work is your actual subject that we are talking about because as well as discipline is an added thing. Again we are not going to consider hard work as the subject 1 and discipline as the subject 2. No. They are two different things only. Okay hard work is subject 1, discipline is subject 2. All right, you are not going to do that. So hard work is something that you are going to take as the actual subject because you are going to neglect the word as well as and whatever noun is given along with it. So hard work is singular. That is why singular verb is simple and cut clear. Okay, people, I hope that's clear, right? Very simple. Okay, now besides Shreya, no one interested is in, oh, sorry, besides Shreya, no one is interested for the movie. So here you know besides this also one of the words like here in we are talking just about one single entity one single person I'm not talking about everybody okay so whenever this word is there always consider what is given along with it okay for example if I'm saying besides children no one are okay so that is what you have to consider okay you are not going to uh, sorry here in I mean that besides share no one so now here even if it would have been besides children no one is so no one okay no one is being considered as your subject here and accordingly you are using a singular verb which is is so guys this rule is very important rule keep this in your mind that what are the words that you have to completely neglect when it comes to your subject verb agreement okay all right people moving to the next rule which is really one of the important rules and what does it say this is your rule number five and it says the following when the sentence begins with here or there very important again okay all the rules are important so like when your sentence is beginning with the words here or there then the verb will agree with true subject what does that mean true subject means the closeness okay the closeness to the blank now see here what does that mean here your example says here are the facts that will decide the judgment of this case so you know here the sentence begin begins with your word here okay but here what is near to my blank this is my blank okay here and i have to fill in the verb the facts facts it, it it is actually plural right so now you know that you have to fill in the plural verb that's very easy that's what your true subject is which is close to your blank, which is near to your blank. That's it. That's the simple funder that you all have to use. Okay. Now in this sentence, the facts is the subject. I told this to all of you, right? Which is also plural. So plural form of the verb is given, which is rare. Sorry, which is are. Okay, guys, making sense? Now, there was a big stone in the middle of the road which was blocking the way. Now, there, the sentence begins with them. But a big stone, what is it? A big stone is your subject one and it is a singular subject, everybody. That is why you are adding a singular verb. That is was. Right, guys? That's so clear, right? You know, guys, with he, she and it, okay, you guys use is, okay, in your present and was in your past. All right, and with you know, like with I, you use M, but in your past you use was, right? Okay, I'm here telling you the past auxiliary verbs. Okay, 
and with your uh, we okay you and they you use what you use are already and that is used as were in your past keep these things in your mind for sure okay that what is the plural form of war what is the plural form of our no uh, sorry what is the past form of our that's were and what's the past form of is am that uh, sorry uh, yeah is am that is your was okay keep these things in your mind very important for your personal understanding now we are moving to the next rule which is your rule number 6 everyone when the sentence has got measurement units very important people okay like you see if kilograms is given to you so you are considering it to be plural but no that is not the case okay whenever you find the measurement units guys then we use singular form of the verb even if the subject is plural okay you always have to keep this in your mind whenever it is about the measurement units two dozens you are not going to say two dozens are okay you are not going to say like that you have to use this singular verb even if the measurement unit is appearing to be plural for you guys okay just look at the example it says 50000 rupees is not a small amount so 50000 rupees like when you are looking at s and you are saying that it is more than 1 rupee that is why it is plural you are right about that but the verb that you have to use that must be singular so here is is the right answer people all right i hope that's making sense right then drinking 2 liters of water in a day is not enough so 2 liters of water it is plural here in we are talking about the plural measurement unit like 2 liters of water but the verb that you are going to use here is singular and this must be kept in your mind guys like your questions i mean the questions related to such things are usually asked in your examination to te uh, to test your understanding So keep this in your mind okay now we are moving to rule number 7 okay guys now what does it say it talks about the plural names subjects like diseases and titles of the book so we use singular form of the work with the subjects mathematics physics biology okay you are always going to use what singular form of the work with them diseases for example diabetes for example measles okay you are always going to use the singular form of the work and with the titles of the book you know at times the titles of any book i mean the title of any book appears to be plural that is okay okay but you have to use what you have to use the singular verb because the title is plural we are not talking about more than one thing there only the title is one thing that is appearing to be plural so according to the rule whatever the title is i mean like if even if it is appearing to be plural you have to use the singular verb okay now for example maths don't be confused just because s is given so that's plural no okay you are going to use the uh, singular verb so here it says maths is not that difficult once you understand the concept okay do you all get that and then the next thing is measles so measles again s is given do not think that here we are talking about something that's really plural so you guys are going to write uh, the plural verb no that's not happening okay that is going to be wrong so maths is not that difficult once you understand the concept and measles is a communicable disease now gulliver travels okay this is really one of the famous books and i really recommend to all of you to read it okay besides that guys make sure that you understand the fact that the title no matter even if it appears to be plural like here like it says gulliver travels so if you are looking at s you will see that um, this is plural so you are going to use the plural verb no use the singular verb so gulliver travels is a book on adventure okay so always try to keep all the rules in your mind you guys just cannot uh, remember this throughout your life if you are going to cram it you have to practice it guys okay try to make certain sentences with the help of all these rules because that is going to help you all prosper well with the given topic and for your upcoming examinations as well okay because i'll be coming out for sure with the mahamenti quiz for all of you for these for this very particular topic the next week but for that you guys have to be a bit patient and make sure that you all are understanding to me right now so perfectly okay people now we are moving to the next rule which is our rule number 8 guys which is saying what when the sentence has collective or class noun very important guys okay see 
then the subject will agree with singular form of the verb. If you see the collective noun or a class noun, okay, what is a collective noun, everybody? A collective noun is a noun which is collectively referring to people, okay? For example, if I am telling you flock of birds, okay, flock is talking about a group of words, birds, okay? So, this collective noun word will be followed by a plural noun, like I said, flock of birds, okay but this will be acting as one single i mean one single unit and that is why i'll be using one singular verb with it now what does it say see when the sentence is collective noun or class noun then the subject will agree with singular form of the verb example of class nouns okay what do you mean by class noun guys i told you about the collective noun right when you're collectively referring to one single thing and class noun is which is talking about one single category for example, if I'm telling you furniture, okay, just see here. This furniture is an antique. So, if I'm talking about the furniture which is there in this room, there can be stool, there can be a table, there can be bed, there can be dressing table, there can be a side table, right? There can be a wooden chair as well, right? So, I'm not specifically talking about any particular furniture. Instead, I'm referring to all that which is available right in this room with a proper class, which is what? Furniture. So that is what your class noun is when you are referring to one particular category. Okay, so here this will work as one thing and you will be using your singular uh, verb with it. Okay, now unhygienic food is not good for health. Now here I am not talking about what is unhygienic here. It may be the junk food. You may consider the junk food to be unhygienic. I may not consider that. Okay, so I'm not particularly naming pizza, I'm not particularly naming any cheesy pasta or any burger. I'm just saying unhygienic food. Okay, so what am I doing? I am actually representing one class of food which is unhygienic. So that is considered to be what a class noun and then with that you guys are going to use one singular word. Okay, now example of collective nouns. As I said, when you're collectively referring to a lot of things. Guys, once the session is over, I would like to invite from all of you what? I would like to invite the sentences related to collective nouns in the comment section. So, whosoever is going to give me the right answer, I am going to reply for sure. Okay. So, now it says a troupe of dancers was performing at the event. So, now what did I say? That the collective noun word will definitely be followed by what? Will definitely be followed by a plural noun. Okay. Keep this in your mind. Okay, it will definitely be followed by a plural noun. But the verb that you guys are going to use, you guys are going to use the verb singular. Okay, why? Because ultimately your sentence started with a troop. Okay, so a troop. So that means I'm talking about one single group of dancers. Okay, keep this in your mind. Your collective noun will always take, okay. It will always take your plural verb. Sorry, it will always take your singular verb. Okay, don't be confused thinking that dancers is um, plural. So, you are going to use the plural verb. That would be wrong. Okay, moving ahead. Now, just look at the example. Okay, I told you about the flock of birds, right? So, here see, the flock of birds is caught by the hunter. So, flock here is representing the group of words. Okay, it is representing the group of words. And of birds, if you see S here, this, if you are considering that this is plural, which is okay. But the verb, okay, the verb must be singular. Keep this in your mind. I am reiterating this so that you guys understand this way. Okay. So, but guys, there is one thing that you should keep in your mind and which is very important to understand. If there are more than one troop of dancers, okay, or more than one flock of birds, then the plural form of verb will be used. What does that mean? Look at the example. Two famous troops of dancers were performing on the stage together. So, now two and troops. So, you are always going to add S, okay, to your word. You are going to add S to your very uh, collective noun word in order to make it plural. So, if that is plural, if your collective noun itself is plural in a sentence, then you can use the plural form of the verb. But otherwise, no. Okay, please understand the difference. It's a thin line difference, but you guys need to understand it. Okay, people, I hope that's clear to everybody. Moving ahead, guys. Also, please note this is another important thing. There are some nouns that are considered as one unit. Okay, I mean they are considered to be the pairs that are always together. Okay, such as bread and butter. Okay, brick and stone and bread and gem. 
okay folk and nine there are a lot of okay you guys just do a little bit of research work let me know this very answer also in the comment section okay so this is your homework too all right so these nouns take singular form of verb okay now uh, students don't be confused see here look at the example bread and butter was my breakfast today so do not go by that method which i told you in the earlier rule that if two subjects are being joined by the conjunction and then you are going to use the plural form of the verb along with it that is different here i am talking about certain things that are always form pair so this bread bread and butter that forms a pair okay bread and jam that forms a pair okay no fork and knife they form a pair so whenever if you see and in between them they are considered as one only and we are going to use just singular verb keep this in your mind okay just keep this in your mind okay now sweat and blood okay sweat and blood do not see that sweat is subject one blood is subject two and you are going to use the plural form of the verb no okay sweat and blood they are considered as one unit and that is why you are going to use is here needed to build this empire i hope that's clear okay moving ahead to rule number 9 guys okay which is again one of the important rules okay now the words and phrase, uh, phrases such as is okay guys please keep this in your mind pretty important rule okay is or each one either neither everyone everybody anyone anybody nobody somebody someone and no one okay so these words and phrases whenever you see them they are singular and so will take singular form of the verb but look at the example now each of the candidates okay so now this expression as i told you one of okay it will take what plural noun i told this to you in one of the rules earlier right you all got that so straight now each of the candidates here in each of the will again be followed by a plural noun but it will take the singular verb keep this in your mind is this making sense to everybody right there that each of the would be taking the plural verb sorry plural noun but the verb that it is talking about is only singular why because it is individually referring to everybody right there each of the okay individual reference is there like whosoever is there like any number of candidates are there but like in all those candidates we are individually referring to each candidate that is why the subject is plural that is why your very verb will also be plural okay is that clear okay moving ahead neither of the girls was absent from the class again neither okay it will again be followed by the plural noun like girls but it will be taking the singular verb only because neither again like out of all the girls i am referring to every single girl individually that is why it will take what it will take the uh, singular form of the verb clear to everyone now the rule number 10 guys which is the rule of proximity and proximity means the closeness it means the nearness very important rule okay keep this in your mind okay what does this mean that when a compound subject contains both a singular and a plural noun a pronoun joined by or or nor the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closest to the verb okay so i think the definition seems to be a little tricky here let me simplify it for all of you here and it says that if your sentence is joined by the term such as or or nor okay so what are you going to consider you are going to take the verb according to the subject which is near to that blank now what does that mean listen to me example says that teacher or the student so what do you see here guys you see that two subjects are there okay this is your subject one this is your subject two but it has been joined by or okay this is the rule so now the very word that you are going to use here in your blank the verb will agree only with the subject which is near to it that is the rule of proximity so here you see students here like in hindi if i am going to tra like translate it what is it like the teacher okay that means uh, whatever whosoever is your teacher ya fir aapke students okay ya to teacher ya to students or means this ya to teacher ya to students for example if i am asking you will you eat a pizza or burger so what i am asking ki tum kya khaoge pizza ya fir burger okay so i am giving two individual choices to you okay so i am not talking like combine uh, in in a, in a combined manner i am not talking to you so this is the thing here guys 
this is your subject one that's okay which is what which is singular right the another one is what this is plural so i will use the verb according to the verb which is near students is near that is why i'm going to use the plural verb read which is in its actual original form now the students or the teacher read the lesson out loud in the class the students now this is subject one teacher is subject two now this is reads s has been added why to make it singular verb why singular because teacher is singular so what do you see that we are actually using the verb according to the subject which is near to my blank right keep this in your mind okay so now guys it's time to let's check your progress i hope that you all understood the concept so well let's have a look at all the questions okay so first question each of these skirts has or have red polka dots so i told you each is something that takes the plural noun but it will take the singular verb so has is the answer right next question the principal or the vice principal or is given two subjects subject one subject two but this is singular right like vice principal is singular i'm going to use is here okay is speaking today now none of the boys none again takes your singular verb it is followed by the plural noun but it will take is okay then you my subject one i my subject two so that is why it is two more than one i'm going to use the plural verb are you and i are going for shopping tomorrow now two thousand rupees it's a measurement unit okay so i'm going to use what singular verb was not a big amount to donate okay now economics since s is given i'm not going to consider it to be plural i'm going to consider it to be singular and that is why i'm adding is economics is fun to study now diabetes s is there guys okay but it's a disease no matter howsoever it appears to me i am going to use only what the singular verb that is leads diabetes leads to many other problems okay now the management okay management is what management is like it consists of a lot of people and management is my collective noun and collective noun what does it take people collective noun takes your singular verb agrees is the answer i hope that's clear to everybody right there right guys so the topic is a bit more important topic we'll be coming up with menti for sure for all of you just go through the entire video once again so that you guys can revise the concept so clearly okay people now i would like to share with all of you an academy subscription features which are literally super important and for your good you know guys your term one is almost approaching there's very less time left for you guys to prepare well so like whatever time is best make most out of it by joining hands with the best and what is best an academy right so guys what are the features just have a look like you guys get to learn life from the comfort of your home unlimited access to all the courses will be given to you so i'm not only talking about english instead i'm talking about other subjects as well so guys this is literally an amazing offer for everybody right there okay the top educators of india would be there on one single platform to guide you all well then regular doubt clearing and answer writing sessions would also be there exhaustive coverage of the entire syllabus would be there we are going to cover the entire syllabus for your good and when it comes to english guys i make so sure that i'm telling you even about a dash a semicolon a colon in your given chapter mentorship and guidance would definitely be there we are going to mentor you well we are going to guide you all well then study material in the form of pdf would definitely be provided practice tests would be there live test series and batch courses so daily practice sessions weekly mock test series live quizzes daily mcq and subjective test series so we have got a lot for everybody right there right make use of it guys we have got different monthly plans you guys can go it with any plan that suits you the best be it 48 months 20 or 36 months 24 months 18 months 15 months 12 months 9 months or 3 months okay you guys can go it with any plan guys okay make use of my code pss10 because this is going to give you straight 10 percent discount and would make your life super duper easier and would also give you an assurance that preksha ma'am is going to be there to solve any of your doubts okay guys so make most of it and make your life super duper easier now we are moving ahead to the iconic subscription this is really unique the reason being herein you will find the educator i mean one-on-one -on -one uh, interaction would be there personal mentor would be there for all of you 
live doubt solving sessions would be there weekly reports would be there to tell you that these are the areas that you're really doing good with and these are the areas that you really need to put hard work in okay and we are going to connect with your parents as well don't be worried guys we are not going to complain to them instead we are going to tell them that yes the student is definitely flourishing super well okay and study planner would also be there planning is always needed guys and all benefits of an academy subscription would also be a part of your iconic subscription so guys herein you have different monthly plans discuss it about discuss about it with your parents or with whomsoever you want to discuss it about but kindly do it the reason being that this is for your good okay and being your educator and being your well wisher i would like to suggest you all try to go for a longer tenure because that's always beneficial people okay so again you can go with any plan that suits you the best make use of the code which is psh10 and it will give you straight 10 percent discount guys okay and this is literally going to give you an assurance that i am going to be there to solve any of your doubts okay then we have something interesting guys anybody can be a subscriber on an academy plus now you all can pay in parts for more than 12 months subscription okay guys in the very payment method go in pay in parts option check our emi then read our faqs okay and please note we have got zero cost emis right so read our faqs guys it will ask you for a referral code put in the code psh tim let's say fifteen thousand is the amount you can pay in two parts which is seventy five hundred each or three parts which is five thousand each okay so talk to an academy expert right today and use the code psh10 because only this code is going to give you the affirmation that i am going to be there to solve your doubts when it is about english okay guys so an academy free special class features which are really amazing live real-time interaction using chats and emojis ask questions using the question tabs live poll options for quiz and poll leaderboard compete with your friends as well okay people so now you know that we had started with these batches which are literally amazing batches guys okay uh, like uh, crack down one exam this is for class 9 so if you guys are really eager to be so well in your examination make sure that you're enrolling in these batches by becoming a plus subscriber and for becoming a plus subscriber you have to use the code psh10 to avail straight straight 10 percent discount okay so this crack term one exam is for all subjects wherein wherein we have social science math science english and hindi and again complete term one syllabus batch for all subject okay it has started on 4th of october guys make sure that you are definitely enrolling in all the batches because all the educators they are gearing up towards the fact that we want all of you to score good marks in your examination so herein you will have math science english hindi and social science okay and then complete term one english batch guys for uh class 10 it also started on 4th of october so for english grammar you will have romana ma'am okay i mean you are having your romana ma'am for english and for english literature you have ra mansur okay so guys don't miss this out opportunity is really amazing all the class 10 t's i mean the 10 t's please pay proper attention and class 10th again crack down one exams all subjects again it started on 4th of october for math science social science english and hindi guys come on you have to be really enthusiastic you have to leave your lethargicness or your laziness or anything that's stopping you from enrolling in this batch okay i mean anything that is literally stopping you from not achieving your goals you have to be a bit more forward now discuss about everything with your parents and take a decision for your work the 10 percent off is there on an academy plus and iconic subscription psh 10 is the code download the app right away get it on google play or on the app store try all of these features for free by using the code psh 10 okay guys so let's crack it okay do not forget to like the session share it with your friends and subscribe the channel Alrighty, people so if you have not hit the bell button yet then kindly do that because the channel is literally going to help you all to score good marks in your examination all right people and i'll see you all again till then just take care enjoy well and make your life super duper easier thank you everybody take care and bye bye guys